Welcome to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him at God's Five Minutes at gmail.com. Now, here's Ed Wilson with God's Five Minutes. Hello, friends. Psalm 46 4 reads, There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Among all the great cities of the world, Jerusalem alone was not built on the banks of a broad stream. She had one little trickle of water, the brook Kidron, which curled out from under the base of the rock on which the temple had been built. But this little rivulet, scarcely big enough to be called a creek, was more blessed than the mighty Euphrates, Egypt's Nile, or Rome's Tiber. Where Nineveh sat as a queen on the broad banks of the Tigris, there was water for irrigation of crops and transporting vessels of commerce, but there were no poets to sing of her streams touching holy things or of the dwelling of the Most High. When we read the sweet melody of these verses, it is easy to picture David seated somewhere on Mount Zion, looking out over the valley below to think of the mighty kingdoms that came against and rivaled him. How he must have considered his resources looked like that little mountain stream compared to the rivers of other cities, which had their horses and chariots, armies and weapons. Israel's security could never rest on the power of her military resources. Like Kidron's flashing reel, rills, rather, she needed the hand of God to multiply her effectiveness to keep her from being swallowed up by the foreign governments that lay on every point of the compass. And yet she has stood while centuries have come and gone. The theme of this verse runs all through the Bible. The message is that no matter what the world may or may not have, there is a river that belongs only to God's people, flowing with living water, able to bring life and refreshment to everything it touches. It is not a muddy, roiling, flooding torrent carrying everything in its pathway. It is a quietly flowing brook, easily overlooked by those who put more value on glamour than substance, and yet beloved to humble believers because it flows from under God's house. From the book of Genesis all the way down through the Revelation letter, if you listen with the ears of your heart, you will hear its merry burble, for it never stops. God's water went out from Eden in Genesis and parted into its four heads. Generations letter the psalmist, saying, Thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasure. Ezekiel, too, saw the river of God and told us, Behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. He prophesied to us of the life-giving quality of God's water, and it shall come to pass that everything whithersoever the waters come shall live. Isaiah's vision was just as splendid as those before him, and he glorified it by showing how God's blessing upon one little brook, hardly more volume, volume than a few buckets full at a time, is increased under God's blessing. He said, The glorious Lord shall be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams, Jeremiah prophesied that God's people should be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters and shall not see when drought cometh. Jesus took up the message by crying out during one of Jerusalem's sacred rituals, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And finally the apostle John, alone on his isle of Patmos, looking away from the crashing blue waves of the Aegean Sea, saw in his soul instead a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. This river of God, this tiny little creek, which begins at the temple as a trickle, but expands itself and covers broad regions, bringing life and pleasure wherever it flows, is surely a description of God himself, as given to us by his Holy Spirit. Just as water runs into every low place and hollow lying in its pathway, so God by His grace wants to water and make fruitful every hurting, needy place in our lives. He doesn't flood and overwhelm us, not with anything. His gentle spirit peacefully washes over us. Have you talked to Him today? You have been listening to God's 5 Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him by email at g-o-d-s-f-i-v-e minutes at gmail.com. Tune in next time to hear more encouraging thoughts from God's Word on God's 5 Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson.